Welcome to part 37 of our series, Secrets of Glossner House. In this installment, we will begin a multi-part examination of the rooms within the kitchen wing of the house. The kitchen wing sits immediately behind the dining room and comprises six spaces. The kitchen itself, butler's pantry, storeroom, cold closet, servant's passage, and servant's hall. The entire wing encompasses about 950 square feet. The butler's pantry, shown here with a blue star, measures 9 by 14 feet. The word pantry comes from the word panettiere, based on the French word pan, meaning bread. Butler's pantries became common in the last half of the 19th century in larger homes where entertaining became increasingly complex, with elaborate meals requiring a staggering array of dishes, stemware, and silver for each course and type of food. As the name suggests, the space was the domain of the butler, who was responsible for everything from the elaborate table settings and polishing the silver to decanting the wines and overseeing the footmen. The pantry was positioned between the dining room and the kitchen and served as a buffer to prevent the noise and smells of the kitchen from invading the dining room. There was also a locking door between the kitchen and the butler's pantry, part of the security in the house, which prevented the servants from having access into the main part of the house during the night. Here we see the original floor plan for the butler's pantry as designed by architect Henry Hobson Richardson. A few alterations were made later, which increased the amount of cabinet space. The plan notes a tile floor, the same unglazed red and buff tiles seen in the pantry and kitchen today. This will be discussed in more detail in a future video. The earliest plans for the room also included a small refrigerator in a cabinet under the countertop, or the shelf as it was known. The handwritten notes indicate this would have been used primarily for iced water. This plan was apparently abandoned early in the planning process. The butler's pantry was one of only a few rooms in the house to be heated with a radiator. Referred to as a coil in the floor plan, it sat adjacent to the door into the dining room, as noted by the section colored in red. The reason for the radiator is that it was designed with a built-in plate warmer, as seen in the example on the right. The warmer was lined with tin and contained perforated, galvanized iron shelves to distribute the heat. The room featured a double sink made of copper with drain boards to either side, aiding in the washing and rinsing of dishes. Copper became a popular material for sinks in the butler's pantry, as it was soft, thus helping to protect fragile china and glassware. Additionally, it was resistant to corrosion and was believed to have antimicrobial properties. The building specifications noted that the sinks were to be left open underneath, as it was thought to be more hygienic and also deterred the freezing of the pipes. The walls and the ceiling of the butler's pantry were covered in a soapstone finish. This type of surface was produced by painting the walls in a base color and then applying a glaze or paint in a second color with a sponge, producing the mottled effect. The entire surface could then be covered with a varnish, making it durable and easy to clean. The finish was even applied to the wood conduit, a section of which can be seen here where the wall and ceiling come together. The conduit contained the electrical wires set into grooves with a cover attached to conceal them. The conduit is barely noticeable as it blends right into the wall surface. The original plan for the cabinets called for sliding glass doors, but traditional hinged doors were ultimately installed. The wood was quarter sawn red oak, the same material seen in the family part of the home. Double thick French glass was inserted in all cabinet doors. The dishes and glassware in the cabinets had considerable value, so each set of doors had its own lock, with the butler controlling access. The drawers below would have held table linens, napkins, and other items. You'll note that each of the drawers has its own lock as well. And in the right photo, we can see an early example of ergonomic design. The handles slant upward at a slight angle, 
making them easier to grip and pull. The butler's pantry was one of the spaces most significantly altered during the time the house was occupied by the Lithographic Technical Foundation. The program printed for the opening of the research facility in 1945 shows that the butler's pantry had been converted into a physical chemistry lab known as the Hood Room. This would indicate that strong and potentially toxic chemicals were used in the space, hence the need for a hood to help draw the fumes and odors out of the room. This floor plan, prepared in 1963, when the house was documented by the Historic American Building Survey, confirms that the sinks and all cabinetry on the south half of the room, shown at top, had been removed. Only the cabinets on the north side, shown in yellow, were still in place. Here we see a view of those original cabinets. You will notice two buttons on the left side of the cabinets next to the door into the kitchen. These are identical to call buttons found in the family rooms of the house. Although it is not known exactly how the ones in the butler's pantry were used, one is believed to have connected to the coach house so that the butler could easily signal to the coachman when the carriage should be brought around to the front of the house. Another surviving bit of early house technology is this wiring, which was found above the north pantry cabinets. It is most likely for an extension ringer. We believe there was a telephone in the servants' hall, and since telephone ringers at the time were not especially loud, this extension ringer would have been essential so that the butler could hear the telephone over the background noise in the kitchen. This view of the butler's pantry from 1974 shows how the room appeared prior to restoration. A functional sink had been installed on the west wall of the room, as this predated the installation of the present functional kitchen in the former servants' hall. The swinging door between the dining room and butler's pantry had been removed during the time that the printing foundation was in the house and was initially thought to be lost. In 1973, however, a docent realized that the door installed in the non-original doorway between the cold closet and back stairs was, in fact, the original swinging door that had been cut down. The door was completely disassembled and rebuilt with the addition of a new style on the left side. It operates using double spring butt hinges, allowing it to swing 180 degrees, with the spring keeping it in the proper closed position when not in use. The room underwent a complete restoration in 1980. This was before much of the primary documentation had been returned to the house, so the room was carefully investigated for clues that revealed its original configuration. A good example is shown left of the window, where the shadow of the original overhead cabinet was still visible, confirming its size and shape. There are no known historic photos of the butler's pantry, However, this view of the courtyard, taken in 1923, provided an important clue. One set of the original faucets is clearly visible through the window. This confirmed the existence of the upright butler's pantry faucets, as called out in the building specifications. Today, these are commonly known as gooseneck faucets. The copper sinks have a distinctive shape due to the inlet or recess set between the two faucets, where the drain is located. At the time, the most common way to close a drain was to insert an overflow pipe, as seen in the example on the right from a vintage German silver pantry sink. The pipe is a bit shorter than the sink itself, so when the water reached that height, it would start running down the pipe, preventing the sink from overflowing. Although the butler's pantry was designed for functionality, it is a beautiful space and continues to be ranked amongst the most popular rooms in the house by visitors. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about its history, design, restoration, and current appearance. Tune in next time when another secret will be revealed.